We just have a great time up in heaven. We shall have a great time up in heaven. Have a great time walking with the angels, singing hallelujah. We shall have a great time up in heaven. Have a great time. We shall have a great time up in heaven. We shall have a great time up in heaven. Have a great time. Walking with the angels, singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Someday, 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 someday I'll go where Jesus is. This is mine. Tell the story of his glory. Call out to meet him in the end. So goodbye, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way. Word. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. So we shall have a great time up in heaven. We shall have a great time up in heaven. Have a great time. Walking with the angels, singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Someday, 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 someday I'll go where Jesus is. from Kings the Grand to all my brothers and my sisters all over Jamaica and all over the world. I wish you God richest blessings for the festive season. Hi, welcome to the Kingston Church of Christ. We are the Heats. Have a beautiful holiday and a blessed time of worship. Bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Mark Anthony and I'm here with my friend Mr. Aki and I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Hello everyone, we are the Marquez from the Santa Cruz Ministry. Season greetings to you all. Have a wonderful holiday. God, God bless, bless you. Hi, my name is David Thompson Wright from the Kingston Church of Christ. And this is my lovely wife, Atoya Thompson Wright. And we'd like, like to wish you season's, season's greetings and a happy, happy holiday from, from our home to yours. Good morning, everyone, and a Merry Christmas. 
My name is Jordan Walker, and today I just want to share with you a passage of scripture. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, it reads, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let us pray. Dear Most Righteous and Eternal Father, I just want to thank you for another day. Thank you for the, for another year that we are able to, you know, reach the end of, Father. You know, a year that despite its challenges, despite its uncertainties, that we are able to get through, you know, with your guidance. And I pray, Father, that you help us to look forward to the new year, Father. Um, I pray that you also be with our heart, Father. I pray that you will portray, or portray um, a heart full of love, Father, to those around us, Father, so that we can be ambassadors of you father and be able to make you proud i love the lord and i thank you in your son's precious holy and righteous name amen when the star of bethlehem arise hallelujah when the star of bethlehem arise hallelujah when the star of bethlehem arise from show me when young child born when the star of bethlehem arise hallelujah when the star of bethlehem arise Hallelujah, when the star of Bethlehem arise, come and show me where the young child born. Wise men, wise men coming from the east. Hallelujah, there were wise men coming from the east. Hallelujah, where were wise men coming from the east. Come, show me where the young Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come show me where the young child born. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Hallelujah, they brought gold, frankincense. Hallelujah, they brought gold, frankincense, and blood. Come, show me where the young child born. Not a man can save my soul. Hallelujah, not a man can save my soul. Hallelujah, not a man can save my soul. But Jesus. Show me where the young child born. Hallelujah. 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 Come show me where the young child born. Hallelujah. Show me where the young child born. Come show me where the young child born. Early Christmas morning, when the stars them get in tin. From a squatter's cottage, a woman start fishing. Holy, holy, holy him name. we God great, be true. we God great, we God. we God great, be true. we God. Great, one day soon this 
little boy, great on prime minister. Then puss and dog we walk and talk and live like brother and sister. Holy, holy, holy his name. Fill we God great be true. Fill we God great. Fill we God. Fill we God great be true. Fill we God great. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary. Jesus, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believers, oh yes, believers, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom. The wise men saw where the baby born, the wise men saw where the baby born, the wise men saw where the baby born, and they said that his name. Jesus, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believers, oh yes, believers, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom. The angels sang when the baby born, the angels sang when the baby born, the angels sang when the baby born, and they said that his name was Jesus, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believers, oh yes, believers, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom, him come from the glory, him come from the glorious kingdom. I know I can 
they seem to get you down. And all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found. Remember there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands I know that I can make it I know that I can stand No matter what May come my way. My life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With Him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way. Good morning, brothers, sisters, friends. Thank you so much for joining us for another worship service. And I hope that you have people around you enjoying this day. In the Western culture, today is Boxing Day. I used to wonder why this holiday was called Boxing Day. Did it have anything to do with the sport of boxing? Most of the theories about this holiday and how it got started point to the tradition in some Commonwealth countries of wealthy people boxing and giving away items to servants or tradespeople or the poor. And also because the work of the servants was required to be able to uh, you know, put on these parties for their employers. And therefore, when those celebrations were over, they allowed the following day to be the observance of the holiday for the people who had actually served the wealthy people in the Commonwealth countries. And that is how you get Christmas Day a holiday and Boxing Day a holiday. When December 26 comes on a Saturday or a Sunday as it does this year, the following Monday is designated the official public holiday. So for everyone, this is truly a wonderful gift to be able to get another holiday, an extended day. When I was a child, because Christmas Day was so climatic, Boxing Day felt like a good thing came to an end. As a child, I looked forward to Christmas Day for all the trappings. But after Christmas, all these things began to disappear or fade. The anticipation of op opening gifts was over. The family members who had come from far and wide, they were getting ready to return home. And the food was almost gone. Yeah, we had some leftovers, but trust me, I, you know, you, you really look forward to that Christmas day for all the food that was there. And even as adults, if you celebrate Christmas for everything else but Christ, then you can feel down after the day, after the big day, and even during the season. I've learned something over the years that I'd like to share with you today. Every day, every single day, is a thrilling day if Jesus is a reason for your celebration. We celebrate not only his birth, but also his life. 
Today we'll go to the father of faith, Abraham, to learn this lesson today, to really let God be the reason for our celebrations. In Genesis 15, verse 1 to 6, it says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, or Abraham, he wasn't Abraham yet. Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus? And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. God used this incredible illustration for Abraham. He says, Count the stars, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord, and it was credited to him as righteousness. We know today that the blessing from Abraham's loins that was supposed to bless the entire world was not Isaac, but Jesus. But at that time, this understanding would have been elusive to Abraham. Abraham was a bit down. Nothing he possessed could fill this empty void. Although Abraham was a man of great wealth, he had no children to inherit his property. He was concerned about it. And this is, you know, his appeal to God. He says, you know, I have no children. And even after God gave him the most encouraging news he could get, when God said to him, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. It really could have been interpreted as your reward will be great. And if you look at the footnotes of your Bibles, you will see that it is an alternative translation. And in fact, this is perhaps how Abraham interpreted it. His response indicated that it was so. He says, you've given me no children. You give me no children. So, you know, there's nothing that God could give him, no material possession that could have filled that void. And he says, I can't imagine anything else, in other words, that can be satisfying. Because when I die, I lose everything to my servant because I have no children. Material possessions are meaningless. And that is basically what Abraham is saying to God, that I have everything I could even imagine. I mean, you've made me wealthy. But this is the one thing I lack. Perhaps you have started to realize just how temporal and meaningless material things are. Things that the world has to offer. And perhaps there are some things that you thought would have made you happy. And you realize, you know what, these things are not making me happy. You probably wish you were as wealthy as Abraham. And even he's saying, you know what, this is not making me happy. You now I was putting on my favorite tie recently to go and do a wedding. And I noticed some curry gravy on it. I was so disappointed at the time, but you know, I quickly went on and did the job. And perhaps you may have received a Christmas gift that already is broken, or that you start to realize, you know, it's, it's fading. And you realize that there are certain things that you've been celebrating that's only seasonal and will disappear. So maybe something is ended or broken or disappearing, and you realize these things can dictate my mood if I'm not careful. It can dictate my outlook on life. Perhaps like Abraham, you've begun to realize that there is a void that material possessions will not fill, at least not permanently. Maybe you've heard the Christian message that Christ fills this void. And perhaps like Abraham at first, you've not quite understood it on an emotional level and what that really means. And perhaps you're continuing to look to something else for your fulfillment. God was telling Abraham things that he didn't quite get, that he didn't quite fully comprehend and grasp. This was a prophecy that people later on would understand. Nonetheless, Abraham takes God at his word and his faith is credited to him as righteousness. Do you believe God's promises 
even if you don't know how he's going to fulfill it to you, you know, when we can accept God's promises, even before they happen, then we can live each day as if it has already happened. And we can feel the incredible joy and peace that it brings into our life. That is why, as Christ said, those who hunger now can be blessed because of what they will receive in the future, because they will be filled in the future. And those who mourn now can be blessed right now because of what they will receive in the future, that they will be comforted. You see, when we have faith and we believe God and we take God at his word, then we can live as if we've already received the blessings. Abraham did not know how God was going to fulfill the promises. So what does Abraham do? Even though he believed God, he still does not remain still and wait for the Lord. He thinks that God helps those who help themselves. You know, that is something that people have thought was well, scripture. It's not in the scripture. So Abraham decides that he's going to take matters into his own hands. And in Genesis 16, verse 1 to 4, it says, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarai said. So, after Abraham had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. Oh my goodness, bangarang! All right, this was the beginning of some serious issues in the family. Abraham could not understand how God was going to deliver his promise. So he and Sarah, or Sarai at the time, her name is going to be changed, reasoned that it must be that he had to have a son with his wife's servant or his wife's slave. Something that was culturally acceptable at that time. He could build a family through his wife's slave. Many mistakes are made when people, even the faithful, cannot see how God is going to work in their lives. And that is what happened with Abraham. He couldn't see it and he thought God needed a little bit of help from him. And because people want something so badly and because God to them may not be enough, they take action that leads to other complications in their lives. In the Christmas season, depression increases every single year. And I think it's because people tend to take stock of what they have or what they don't have and they feel that they are lacking in some way. Maybe people compare themselves with others. That person could afford to buy a phone and I can't. Or in that commercial, I saw a man giving his wife a car and I can't even buy a donkey. You know, there are so many things that make us feel inadequate, many advertise, advertisements. Or somebody might feel that, you know, there's nothing that they can hope for that lasts. Their bank account is empty after all, doing all that Christmas shopping. And some have bought themselves expensive gifts and maybe they are having buyer's remorse today. Feasts are over and there are a few empty seats at the table this year or there were empty seats at the table this year. Or maybe some relationships have not panned out and there are feelings of loneliness and rejection. And these feelings become exaggerated at Christmas time when you think that other people are having a great time and everything is going well with other people. Some tend to make Christmas about the drinking and partying. I did that when I was a teenager and soon came to realize that these drunken parties left me feeling empty and ashamed. And if you don't apply wisdom, if that is your experience and you don't apply wisdom, then you probably are planning another drunken experience on the New Year's Eve. And that's some things that I did as well. And you know, those are things that I'm ashamed of, but it was also dangerous. You know, this will only make you feel worse as it did with me. I learned quickly where not to look for fulfillment. 
And the problem is that I didn't learn at the time where to look for fulfillment and for joy. I knew the Christian message. The angel said to the shepherds, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Great joy. And that is really what God wants for you. It can't be found in anything else but in Christ. And I sang the Christmas carols, joy to the world. But I did not feel the kind of joy. At least it wasn't permanent. It was, it was coming from things or, or temporal things. And it wasn't sustainable or it wasn't sustained. And I had to learn though how to be satisfied in Christ. That is something has, that has to be learned. If you remember Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13, Paul the Apostle had to learn where to find his satisfaction. He said, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul the Apostle was a prisoner, and the church in Philippi sent Paul some gifts, and Paul is happy about these gifts. He was happy for the restored relationship, for the renewed concern that the Philippians had shown to him by sending their gifts while he was in prison. And he told them that it is not the gifts that made him joyful, but it was their expression of concern. You see, what we really do need to celebrate is relationship, not necessarily the gifts. And then he said that he had learned something. He learned how to be content in Christ. This helped him to endure every season of life. There are so many people that put their hope in things, and if they don't get it, they're not happy. One can be a Christian for many years and not learn these things. People can still look to things, temporal things, blessings that won't necessarily last forever. And we really do need to be able to learn the secret of being content. In Genesis 17, verse 1 to 5 and 15 to 27, it says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham. All right, so this is now where Abraham's name is changed. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you father of many nations. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. Some may say Sarah. I will bless her and I will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man? A hundred years old? No, he wasn't exactly a hundred, right? He was 99. But I guess when the son is born, he would be a hundred. Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Ishmael is the son of Hagar. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear your son and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I've heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. 
He will be the father of 12 rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, Mark, just put a pause on this, please. I went to, it was moving. No, no, you can keep going. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. On that day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born in his household and bought with his money every male in his household and circumcised them as God told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that very day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household and bought from a foreigner, was circumcised with him. God had a plan, we see. God had this plan from before, but he is revealing it to Abraham in stages. He was not going to change his plan because Abraham did not understand how it was going to be fulfilled. Abraham went and he made certain decisions in the meantime, but God's plan was unchanging. And God decided to bless Ishmael regardless. Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness before, remember that. But it was a growing faith. Abraham was growing in his faith. First, he believed God that he would actually have a child in his old age. Now, he believes that Sarah will have a child in her old age as well. Now, we can criticize Abraham all we want, but God accepted his faith. Now, a balloon is still a balloon, even if it's deflated. If it is being inflated, it's still a balloon. And if it is completely inflated, it is still a balloon. The size of it does not make it what it is. Abraham's faith at the beginning needed to grow. But even that faith was good enough to be credited to him as his righteousness. You know, our faith grows. It doesn't matter if it's little faith or big faith. Your faith is growing. In 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3, Paul the Apostle wrote, we, o we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. One of the things that I appreciate about God is his patience with us, that we have faith and it is growing, and he's patient with us as our faith grows. Matthew records it near, near the end of his book that some of the disciples doubted, but he still worked with, him, with them, didn't he? You know, once Jesus was asked about increasing faith, the disciples said, increase our faith. And Jesus said that if they had faith as small as a mustard seed, they could do great things. Paul the Apostle really indicated that faith can grow. And we see that Jesus is saying, if you have even small faith, it is sufficient. And God is patient with us as our faith grows. Now, it's so important for us to really acknowledge that some of us may even criticize Abraham, right? How come he, he you know, is the father of faith and he went and he had a child with Hagar? How come he laughed when God told him about Sarah? Or, you know, different things like that. But we see that God accepted his faith and credited his faith to him. Now we have to be careful about how we judge. Even judge each other. We can sit in judgment of each other because of where somebody's faith is at. You know, the Bible said that we need to stop judging. We should not judge. How about people in other congregations who have faith? You know, we have to, to really take our faith where it is at and where people's faith is at. Pay attention to your faith. You know, don't look at where it is at now. Look at the direction. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? What about your love? Is your love increasing or decreasing? Sometimes we can have zeal without love. And you have to be careful about that. That is not the kind of faith that God wants you to have. All right, so let us really accept people where their faith is at and help them to grow. But we have to make sure that we are judging ourselves. Just take the time to see if your faith is growing. Now, the ultimate test for Abraham was, is he going to be willing to sacrifice his son Isaac? 
all right? Is he willing to sacrifice his son? You know, when God called him to sacrifice his son, he could have tried to run away, like how Jonah tried to run away from uh, to Tarshish when he was given a very difficult task, something he did not want to do. But let's look at Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 18, when Abraham faced the ultimate test. Is God going to be his all? Is God going to be his great reward? Genesis 22, verse 1 to 18 reads, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. So God makes it clear to Abraham who he's talking about, but he gives a hint as well where he says, your only son. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the knife, the fire and the knife. And the two of them went on together. Isaac, noticing that something was up, spoke up and said to his father, said to his father, Abraham. No. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham! Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. We see this emphasis again on your only son. It is because it is also a prophecy. Isaac is a forerunner of Jesus. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, again, the emphasis on your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. So God has reiterated a promise to Abraham and it came because Abraham obeyed God. Abraham passed the test. We cannot say that we are Christian if our peace and our love and our ethics ebbs and flows with every situation or it appears and vanishes like the morning mist. We need to be consistent, whether we are well-fed or we are hungry, whether we are treated fairly or unfairly, in good times and in bad times. We need to pass the test, and Abraham did. Abraham obeyed a very difficult command, and God blessed him. There are many parallels here between this incident 
and God giving his son to die on the cross for our sins. Firstly, the term your only son is a dead giveaway. Isaac was not only Abraham's son, but he was really called the only son here. And Jesus is the only son of God. He is the son of God. Now, we see here that for three days, that at least in Abraham's mind, Isaac was as good as dead, just as Jesus was dead for three days and three nights. We see that God would provide a substitute sacrifice at this place. And God did provide a substitute sacrifice for us. Instead of us dying, he provided his son. Now what's interesting is that Golgotha and the ancient site of Mount Moriah where this happened is believed to be the same location. So it is likely that Jesus was crucified was supplied at the same place where God supplied a ram instead of Isaac. Now, when God says, I'm your great reward, we have to understand that God is trying to communicate this same message to Abraham right throughout his life, that he's going to be provided or he will provide what is needed and he himself is going to be the reward. He himself is the one who was to come. Abraham's reward is Jesus. How about you? Do you look to God for that reward? And do you find Jesus rewarding? When Jesus was born into the world, he had conversations indicating that he is the one who is sufficient for us. John 4, in his conversation with the Samaritan woman, Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us a well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. So Jesus is making claims that what he is going to give is better than anything that Jacob had and that Jacob could have given. And like Abraham, this woman was hearing that Jesus was a real fulfillment in her life. There's nothing else that could have satisfied her. And she was looking for satisfaction in many relationships. Jesus is the one which we all should look to because he is the one the prophecies pointed to. He's the Messiah. He's the one who was to come. He's Abraham's seed. He's the blessing of all nations. And it is because we believe in him why we also become the children of Abraham. In conclusion, friends, We've come near to the end of the Christmas season. And, uh, you know, for many, Christmas Day was a crescendo. That was a height of the Christmas season. And perhaps some people are feeling a little bit down because it's coming to the end or it's over and that's how it can feel. But we need to look to Jesus as a source of our joy. When Jesus was born into the world, it was the beginning, not the end. So those who look to other things for their joy may find it only short-lived or temporary. And the celebrations can be only momentary. And that can lead to a downtime after. But those who look to Jesus, every day is a thrilling day. I would love for our faith to grow. We see that Abraham's faith had to grow over time. That Abraham, he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. But he also took into his matters into his hands and he went and he had a child with Hagar. When God came to him and told him, no, the child is going to come through Sarah, he laughed at first and he pleaded, well, let it come through, let the blessing come through, come through Ishmael. And God said, no, he's going to be blessed too, but the blessing is coming through Sarah and you're going to have a son, call him Isaac. You know, Abraham believed God. But you see that his faith was growing. All faith is growing as well. 
and that God is very patient with us. No matter where your faith is at, it will grow. Continue to pray and to grow your faith. And may we continue to grow in our love for each other as well. I believe that Jesus truly is a reason for our celebration each day. He is our very great reward. God in the flesh, Emmanuel with us, he is a reason for our celebration. I hope that not only you had a great day yesterday, but today is also a great day for you. May you have an incredible Boxing Day. Continue to celebrate the birth of Christ. And may those celebrations continue throughout 2022. God be with you and see you soon. Let us pray for the communion. Dear Lord, Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you are patient with us and that you give us your promises. We look forward to seeing you face to face. And in this life, by faith, we look forward to what is to come because of the promises that Jesus has made. We are especially heartened by the fact that Jesus was born into this world to bring joy and that when he came, he sacrificed himself so that we could have eternal life today. We see in Abraham's life that his command, the command that you gave him to sacrifice his son was really a prophetic incident, Father, to really mirror what you did for us. There was no one to tell you to stop because, Father, we needed Jesus. We needed that sacrifice to live. And Lord, we are appreciative that you did not stop, that you went full all the way, Father, and we are grateful because we have salvation today. We pray that we'll not take that salvation for granted, that we'll live each day for Jesus Christ and that he will be the reason why we celebrate each day, that we will learn the secret of being content in any and every situation. Father, indeed, that we will understand that Jesus is the one we must look to, that he provides what we need that wells up to eternal life in us. Continue to bless us, and as we take this communion, help us, Lord, uh, to really participate in the uh, eating of this bread and drinking of this fruit of the vine in a way that Jesus meant it. Help us to remember Jesus and the sacrifice he made. And I pray that from this exercise that our faith will grow. Cleanse us, Father, forgive us of all sins, and help our faith to be strong. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know?
Salutations, greetings everyone. Please pay careful attention to the following announcements. Today, we start off with some great news. We have a new sister in Christ, Rhonda Batchelor in the Montego Bay region, who was baptized earlier in the month. Let us all welcome Rhonda to the family. This week, for our midweek service, in the place of our usual service, on Wednesday, we will instead be having our watch night service on Friday, December 31st at 10.30 p.m. via the Zoom platform. Please bring a visitor. Now, here are your options for giving your offering. You may utilize the card machine at the church office on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Fridays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. You may also do online bank transfers by making deposits to the church's account at any Scotiabank branch. For transfers and deposits at the bank, call the church office for banking details. After the transaction is done, please call, text, or email the office with details of the type of offering that you gave, such as regular, poor, or special missions. You may also use the PayPal platform for US dollar online contributions. Use the address paypal.me forward slash KCOC in JA for transfers. Next week's service. We look forward to meeting next Sunday after we ring in a brand new year. A new year, but the channel and start time are both familiar. So see you again right here at 10 o'clock in the morning. The message will be presented by Mikhail Price. Now it is time for our final song. Well, Merry Christmas, Latroy. Well, Merry Christmas, Tina. And Merry Christmas, Chicago. All of you, all of you. Happy New Year as well. And Merry Christmas all around the world. Let's give Christ some praise. Here we go. You ready to sing?
May the grace of the Heavenly Father and his peace be on you all. Merry Christmas.